Hello everyone, I'm Xiao Liu from Product Definition Group. First of all, I'd like to thank you for participating in this beta testing program. In this video, I'd like to introduce a new functionality for SOLIDWORKS 2019, which is called 3D Texture. Frequently, users need to add a random repeating or array of three-dimensional patterns to their model surface, like dimples or bumps. However, this can be very challenging for classic CAD modeling strategies. SOLIDWORKS 2019 introduced a feature called 3D Texture to solve this problem. Basically, any types of images with textual mapping can be used for 3D Texture, but grayscale high map images are preferred. Here are a few examples to give you a basic idea how does the resultant 3D Texture looks like. Like shown in this photo, the gradient of the color includes the physical height information. The white color means this area has a maximum elevation from the model surface, and the black color means this area has a zero elevation from the model surface. To create a 3D texture, first apply a grayscale high map image onto the surface of a model, then map the image as a textual appearance to fit the surface as desired. Edit the setting in the 3D Texture Project Manager to create a 3D texture with accurate shape and a smooth surface. Finally, save the 3D texture as a graphic body. 3D texture in a SOLIDWORKS is very useful when you're trying to create a repeating or a random array of geometric 3D features to your model. In this example, I will show you how to use the basic options for 3D textures by adding a group of three-dimensional texturized pattern to the model. Here, I have a classic SOLIDWORKS model with five straight surfaces and one curvature surface. It will be interesting for curvature surface to have a 3D texturized pattern. And a 3D texture will help us to accomplish this. To make a 3D texture, first I will apply a grayscale high map image to the surface of the model by simply drag the grayscale image to the curvature surface. I will apply a second one to the straight surface. In this example, I'm only interested in making a 3D texture on the curvature surface. However, I, I will explain why I'm applying a second one to the straight later. The second step is to mapping this grayscale high map image on the curvature surface. You can click the display manager, then right click the, the textual appearance, then edit the appearance, advanced mapping. You can change the size or location of the pattern here and change the size here. Also, you can move and change the size of this rectangle to have a desired pattern. In this example, I like to have a four pattern texture and uh, avoid the incomplete pattern. When it looks good to you, you can click the green check to confirm the mapping. Now I will active the 3D texture feature and create a 3D texturized pattern on the curvature surface. You can either go to insert features and 3D texture to activate it, or you can go to here to expand the solid body and right click the body and uh, click this icon to active the 3D texture. This is a 3D texture property manager. The body to texturize shows the selected body for the 3D texture. Only one body can be selected each time. If you enable the dynamic help, when you move your cursor to each option, a small window will pop up and show you the details for each option.
In the texture setting group box, user can determine which texture they want to generate a 3D texture. Previously, we have applied two 3D textures. The top one is on the curvature surface, and the bottom one is on the side surface. In this example, we only interest in generate the 3D texture on the curvature surface, so we enable the top one. Also, the information for the texture refinement and the displacement offsite are shown in the texture setting group box. In order to show you the function of white up black down, first I will generate a crossed mesh for the 3D texture. If you enable the white up black down, the part with white color will have the maximum elevation and black color will have the zero elevation. If you uncheck this option, the black color will have the maximum elevation and the white color will have the zero elevation. Also, you may notice that when you change the status of the white up black down, this icon will change as well to show you the status of this option. In this case, we will use white up black down. Texture offside distance decides the maximum value of the elevation. You can change the value by moving the slider Texture refinement decides the local mesh on the 3D texture. In order to show you the function, I will increase the maximum size first. A lower value will increase the number of the local mesh on the 3D texture to better fit the contour of the grayscale image. The maximum element size decides the mesh size of the overall model. A lower value of maximum element size will decrease the size of the mesh and smooth out the transition between the adjacent model and the 3D texture. A smaller value of maximum element size and the texture refinement may increase the computational time. It may take a few seconds or longer time. It all depends on the setting of your model. When it looks good to you, you just click the green check to confirm your settings. As you can see, a watertight graphic body has been generated. Thank you for watching and have fun with your beta test.